Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com under the topic of Newton's Laws, the first one under that topic, called Balanced and Unbalanced. Uh, we're basically looking at Newton's first law, so let's go through a few different ways that you may see your physics teacher defining this. Uh, first, we see the one that was closest to kind of word for word what Isaac Newton would have written. Uh, an object at rest will remain at rest, and an object in motion will remain in motion in a straight line with constant velocity unless an unbalanced force acts upon it. So you see unbalanced here from our title, balanced and unbalanced. Okay, so um, we don't necessarily need to separate being at rest, staying at rest, and being in motion, remaining in motion. We can combine that by saying something like this. An object will maintain its current state of motion unless an unbalanced force acts upon it. Well, state of motion is a little bit vague. I liked that the first time I heard it because it kind of combined everything. But really, the simplest way to say this, I think, is an object will maintain its current velocity unless an unbalanced force acts upon it. Now, for this to make sense to everyone, they have to remember that velocity includes direction. Okay, so first of all, if the velocity is zero, that's at rest. And if the velocity is non-zero, it's in motion. So velocity really incorporates both being at rest and being in motion. It incorporates the idea of a straight line because velocity includes direction. And if it's maintaining its velocity, that means it's maintaining its direction as well as its speed. Okay, now unless an unbalanced force acts upon it. Next, we're going to talk about what that means. So an unbalanced force is when one direction is being pulled or pushed harder than another direction. Okay, so I like to think of a tug of war. You'll see I'll talk about it in terms of that uh, in other slides. If the two sides of a tug of war are pulling the same strength, then the rope won't move. It'll stay in its current velocity. However, if one side pulls harder, it'll begin accelerating that direction. And so if you look at all the forces, and if any of the forces don't have something balancing them out, then it's unbalanced, and it will change its velocity. Keep in mind, a changing velocity means there's an acceleration. Okay, so an unbalanced force will cause an acceleration. A balanced force would mean that it would maintain its constant velocity, its current velocity. All right, let's get to a, a couple of examples here. Okay, so this first one, we see a goalkeeper, and I love soccer, kicking the ball up. So you see it going up, and then over here it's coming back down. So, and bouncing over the goalie right into the goal there. So we can see that uh, this soccer ball has one force on it. Because it's up in the air, there is only a downward force. By the way, this is called a free body diagram. And uh, I'm going to explain them in more detail in another video. But here, just the basic idea is that there are forces labeled that tell you what direction they're pointing. And I'm going to talk about what they are in the concept builder. You'll just see an arrow that represents a force. Okay, so the soccer ball doesn't keep the same velocity. As it's going up, it's slowing down. And as it's coming down, it's speeding up. And it's changing directions as well. Um, it doesn't keep the same velocity because the force of gravity is unbalanced. There's no other force up here that's balancing out this force of gravity. So gravity wins the tug of war. Okay, since there's no one or no force uh, playing or pulling against it. So it accelerates down. As it goes up, it slows down. And as it goes down, it speeds up. Remember, that's how uh, acceleration works. If it forces down, the acceleration is down. So an upward velocity slows down and a downward velocity speeds up. All right, uh, next example. Let's clear that. Clear. And next example. Oops, skipped the example. Didn't mean to do that. Well, this is interesting. Let's go back to here and try it again. There we go. All right, so here we see uh, a golf ball rolling across the ground and we see it come to a stop. 
Okay, so what forces are there? Well, now gravity is not going to be accelerating up and down because gravity ties the tug of war with the grass pushing up on the golf ball. Let's just label those really quick. So here's gravity and here's the grass. Later on, we'll call that the normal force. But for right now, I haven't introduced it to my class, so we'll just call it the force of the grass pushing on the ball. But there's another force. It's that tricky force of friction. There is nothing pushing against friction, so friction will cause the ball to accelerate. In this case, the ball is moving right, friction is to the left, or the unbalanced force is to the left, so this ball would slow down, which you saw happen. Okay? Um, in, uh, and so that's what happens when you have an unbalanced force like that. Next, we'll take a look at um, a balanced force. And there it goes. It's uh, I'm having some trouble with my internet. Come on. This ball is floating through the International Space Station, and you can kind of see that it is uh, moving at the same speed, but of course, my internet is very slow. There we go. Traveling at a constant speed, drifting through the International Space Station. All right, so well, what forces were on it? <laughs> None. There was no gravity, nothing else. Okay, side note, there actually was gravity. It was actually, of course, of course, it was actually curving around the Earth in orbit. We're just going to pretend since it was in that for efforts frame, it was moving with constant velocity. Okay, so no forces, therefore they can't be unbalanced, it would be balanced. And so whenever you see something moving at constant velocity, you know the forces are balanced. Okay, that is huge. Whenever it's at constant velocity, the forces are balanced. If the forces are balanced, it's moving at constant velocity. Those two link together as you go through this whole concept builder. They are crucial. All right, so next, we're going to look at a hockey puck, which moves right along the ice at constant velocity. Um, as it moves along there, it just keeps going and going and going. Okay, you could also picture an air hockey puck drifting across an air hockey table. So in this case, now we do have gravity. Okay, here's gravity. And we have the ice, or once again, the normal force pushing up. And those are equal, so it doesn't accelerate up. It doesn't accelerate down. We're going to pretend that there's actually no friction. There's actually a very small amount of friction. It would eventually stop. But we're going to pretend it's zero because in the video it looked like it was zero. So there aren't any horizontal forces. Therefore, we have a balanced force. And anytime you see a balanced force, that means the that velocity is remaining constant. Same thing, vice versa. Anytime you see the velocity remaining constant, it means there's a balanced, balanced force that is crucial for this concept builder. All right. And one last uh, constant velocity. We see a car. We will in a moment here see a nice video of a car just driving along the road at constant velocity. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, once again, we have gravity and the road, we'll call it the road, uh, constant pushing equal and opposite. So they are tying the tug of war. These are balanced forces, balanced forces in the vertical direction here. In the horizontal direction, looks like we had friction trying to slow the car down. We'll just say the engine trying to speed it up for now. We can get more complicated later. And so it's balanced in the horizontal direction. And since everything is balanced, that means the velocity is constant. Remember, balanced always means the velocity is constant. If it's unbalanced, the velocity is never constant. All right. So let's get into some examples in the apprentice level. Okay, so the apprentice level will all have free body diagrams here. You'll see arrows, although you won't know what they are representing. You could pretend like this is gravity, but it doesn't really matter. You're just looking for, do they cancel each other out? So we're looking for uh, uh, forces that cancel out. Well, the upward force is exactly the same as the downward force, so they cancel out. We see the first 
this force is not as long as the one the other direction. So this much of it cancels out, but it leaves this much unbalanced. Okay, so first thing you'll do is you'll come back and say there were unbalanced forces. That eliminates constant speed as an option. That means it must either be speeding up or slowing down. So the key here is that you're told up in the description what direction the object is moving. That is most crucial to read. Very, very important to read what direction it's moving. So this is moving to the left. It is being pushed. <coughs> Excuse me. It is being pushed to the right. Anytime something is moving one way and it's being, and there is a force pushing against that motion, it is going to slow down. If the force was pushing with the motion, so let's just say this said rightward, let me actually clear this. If this said rightward, okay, it was moving this way, then the extra force was pushing the same direction it's already moving, then it would speed up. All right. Okay. And all the apprentice level ones are, um, are uh, free body diagrams. And so that is basically what you'll be looking at. All right. And so then on the master level, which is the next level, we see that uh, um, they add in both position time graphs, which you see here, and dot diagrams. So here I'll link a video. The first half of this acceleration video describes what dot diagrams are and how you can tell whether the object is speeding up or slowing down, which is crucial to answering these questions. Um, and I will also link a position time graph video here, which will help you um, if you uh, don't remember or you never learned how to read a position time graph. I'll explain briefly here how to tell what this particular one means, um, but if you need uh, further help with position time graphs, go to the link that I just put up a moment ago. All right, so we see here we've got a rightward moving object. It is going in the positive direction, which means it's rightward. We see that it start that uh, it starts out with a big slope, and remember, slope is velocity. Okay, so a big slope to a small slope. That means it goes fast to slow. Okay, well, fast to slow. If it starts out going fast and it ends up going slow, it slowed down. Okay, um, slowing down or speeding up means unbalanced force. Okay, just a quick uh, word of mention here. Remember, uh, anything with a, a constant slope, like any of those three lines, would be at constant speed, because the slope is not changing and the slope is the speed, and constant speed would mean balanced force. All right. Now, on to, and, if, and for the dot diagrams, don't forget to go to that link if you forgot how to tell if they're going speeding up or slowing down. That's the biggest key. All right, next is the wizard level. The wizard level adds three things. It adds uh, position time and velocity time tables. This link here will take you to a video that teaches about uh, position time and velocity time tables. Once again, with the purpose being to tell, are they speeding up or slowing down? Um, the video, the, the time that I teach those things is in the middle of the video, but if you look in the description, you'll see um, some links to those times. Uh, and then it also has velocity time graphs, as you see here. Here's a link to a video in case you need more of an update on velocity time graphs. Okay, so we see here uh, in this example, the velocity starts out at zero. Remember, velocity is just like what the speedometer reads. And so if it starts out at zero, that means it starts out going very slow. It stopped, okay? And it ends up really far from zero, which means it's going fast. So this started out going slow. It ended up going fast. That means it was speeding up, going from slow to fast. And anything that's speeding up or slowing down is an unbalanced force that must be causing it, because if it was at constant speed, it must be a balanced force.
And that's it. Go ahead and go through. And if you need help with any of the free body diagrams, there was a lot at the beginning to help you with that. If you need help with any of the graphs or tables or dot diagrams, I put those links in there to the uh, uh, videos where I taught those. And remember what you're looking for in those is, did it speed up or did it slow down? All right. Uh, if you have any questions, put those in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and it helped you to solve the concept builder, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. And uh, we'll see you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beardman.